Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for gathering us together again. Thank you for the way you teach us every time we come. We pray that you make us stronger in the word of the Lord, in the way of the Lord, and make us to profit your church as we minister day by day, week after week in Jesus' name. We pray that you also improve our prayer life so that our prayers will bring great results in your church. In Jesus' name we pray. We are in the book of Jonah and today we are in chapter 2. The title I've given this message is Jonah's Prayer of Submission and Consecration. Jonah's Prayer of Submission and Consecration. Jonah chapter 2 verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. The word then means after a lot of things had been lost, after he had waited for such a long time, after he was thrown into the depths of the sea, eventually he prayed, then Jonah prayed. He didn't pray at the right time, but thank God, eventually, he prayed. Although we might have missed praying in the past, eventually when the time comes and we pray, God will definitely answer. God answered the prayer of Job, you will find, of Jonah, you will find that in verse 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Jonah waited until this time before he prayed. In chapter 1, you will remember, he was sleeping while others were praying to their gods, the gods that were no gods. He knew that the trouble came as a result of him. Now, eventually, he had uh, been dropped into the sea. He saw this uh, being dropped into the sea as God's remedial action. It will, your prayer will depend upon how you interpret the actions of God in your life. If he had interpreted it to mean, God is angry with me. There is no remedy. And there is nothing I can do about it. Maybe he will not have prayed the way he prayed. But he saw what had happened as God's remedial action. To bring him back to submission and acceptance of the preaching assignment. And the controversy the Lord had with Jonah is that he had abandoned the preaching of the word unto Nineveh. And maybe the controversy he has with you or with any of us is that we have abandoned the assignment he gave us. And whatever he is doing, once we accept and we say, yes, Lord, I'm going to go back to what you have called me to do, then God will answer our prayer. There are three points we're going to look at. Number one is complaint in distress. Is complaint in distress. Number two is, conf is confession and decision. Is confession and decision. Number three is consecration and deliverance. Number one is complaint in distress. In Jonah chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Please notice it says unto the Lord his God. He addressed the Lord. He knew that this is Jehovah, the covenant God, covenant-keeping God of Israel, the God of heaven. In fact, he refers to the Lord a number of times. Look at verse 2. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, he says. And as he goes on, as you look at verse 6, the latter part of verse 6, Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. He knew that he was praying to the Lord, the God of heaven. And then it says, he prayed out of the fish's belly. If you can imagine the thing happening to him at this time. In fact, he uses a lot of a number of words that described a situation. It was an impossible situation. He called it the fish's belly. He called it another verse in affliction. In another verse, it's in the belly of hell. In another place, it's in the deep and in the flood. Look at verse 2. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Maybe you are wondering, how is it that he's praying in the fish's belly? And then he says, I prayed, I cried, I did all this. And he heard me. Obviously, he didn't write the... Um, he didn't try to the prayer. He didn't try to this account while he was in the fish's belly. 
you must understand he came out of the fish's belly eventually and then he recalled he recollected everything that took place there and now he added he heard me out of the belly of hell cried i and thou heardest my voice for thou hast cast me into the deep and in the midst of the seas and the floods come pass about me about all thy billows and all thy waves pass over me it was an affliction in deep distress this great distress was just because of one thing number one because he was running away from god the distresses in our lives the problems in our lives if we look at them we might see it's because we are running away from god what do we mean by running away from god when you are running away from the assignment he has given you from his revealed will he has revealed to you that's like running away from god because he was forsaking the will of god number three because of refusal to warn the wicked in nineveh and he says son of man i've made you a watchman over the house of israel over your community you'll get the word in my mouth give them warning from me if we refuse to warn the wicked then we're refusing the assignment he has given us and distress or problems may come into our lives and number four it's because if it's unfaithfulness to the call of the prophet preacher the preaching prophet or the prophet preacher he was unfaithful to the call and whenever something like that happens we come into distress by the way it wasn't only jonah that came into distress we read in the accounts of other people too in the bible how they came into a distress when they didn't fulfill the will of god in psalm 55 psalm 55 reading verse 2 and reading verse 4 attend unto me and hear me i mourn in my complaint and make a noise then in verse 4 my heart is so pained within me and the terrors of death are falling upon me in verse 5 fearfulness and trembling are come upon me and horror has overwhelmed me obviously when we do not stay in the center of the will of god there will be distress and that's what happened to jonah that's what happened to other people and they complained in distress in psalm 142 142 reading verses 1 uh, through to 4 i cried unto the lord with my voice with my voice unto the lord did i make my supplication i poured out my complaint before him i showed before him my trouble when my spirit was overwhelmed within me then thou knewest my path in thy way wherein i walked in the past have they privileged a snare for me i looked on my right hand and be and beheld but there was no man that would know me refuge failed me no man cared for my soul that was the very condition of uh, this man uh, jonah and he cried unto the lord whatever condition we're in we can cry unto the lord as well and the lord will answer our prayers in jesus name in psalm 116 116 verses 3 and 4 the sorrows of death come past me and the pains of hell got hold upon me i found trouble and sorrow then called i upon the name of the lord O lord i beseech thee deliver my soul well the good thing is that eventually jonah prayed he didn't pray in time but eventually he prayed point number two is confession and decision he made a confession before the lord when he found himself in this affliction in the belly of the whale in the belly of hell in the deep and in the floods look at it now from verse 4 he said then i said i am cast out of thy sight yet i will look again uh, toward thy holy temple stop there for a moment it says then said i i am cast out of thy sight then you ask jonah jonah but what are you trying to do yourself i'm trying to flee away i'm trying to run away from the presence of the lord i'm trying to get away from the control of the lord from the supervision of the lord but the lord has given you what you wanted that's exactly what you wanted you wanted to be away from the presence of the lord and now the lord has granted you exactly that why are you complaining oh he says now i realize that it's a very painful thing to try to run away from the lord but there is a lesson to learn here it was what he was looking for and what he was trying to do and when he felt that he accomplished his goal god abandoned him to his goal there may be a goal that you have 
And that goal is taking you away from the assignment he has given you. That goal is taking you away from the great commission. It's taking you away from preaching the word unto the people that shouldn't die, that ought to repent, that the Lord wants to bring unto himself. You might be rejoicing in the goal before you get it. When eventually you achieve that goal, if God will abandon you to that goal, you will not be able to bear it. When God abandons us to our alternative, to soul winning, alternative to soul winning that's the goal we choose when we abandon the work of the lord when god abandons us to that chosen alternative then we will not be able to bear even our choice go on to verse five the waters come past me about even to the soul that's his confession now the death closed me round about the weeds were wrapped about my head i went down to the bottoms of the mountains the earth with her bars was about me forever yet as thou brought me brought up my life from corruption O Lord, my God, he, as he talks about the prayer, he also testifies about the answer to the prayer. I want to remind you again, he didn't try this record while he was in the belly of the fish. It was after he was delivered, after the whole account, he now wrote everything down. That's why he could put uh, the testimony as well as the prayer all together. Uh, but uh, here we see that he made his confession and then he made his decision as well. In answer chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 49, reading in verse 14. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, and my Lord has forgotten me. That's the way Jonah felt. He felt, I'm abandoned. I'm cast out in the, from the presence of the Lord. Yet I'm going to do something in verse 4. I will look again. I've been looking at that before. I didn't know how precious the opportunity was that I have, uh, that I had, but I'm going to look again toward his holy temple. And uh, he felt abandoned and forsaken for a short time. And you may feel like that when you're in the midst of the problem, but keep on praying. The Lord will answer your prayer. In Psalm 77, Psalm 77, verses 5 through to 9. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commute with mine own heart, and my spirit uh, made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? Or will he, and will he be uh, faithful? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? As he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Sailor, that means pause and think about it. And this was the very condition of this man that he felt that uh, things were really upside down. He was in a great problem, but eventually he repented. He decided in verse 4, he said, I will look again toward thy holy temple. And uh, when you decide that you are going to look at the Lord again, and you are going to see what the Lord will do for you again, the Lord will not disappoint your faith. But three things before I leave that section. Number one, he remembered the forgotten call. When you get into trouble and you are praying to the Lord, what you need to do is to remember the forgotten call. Number two, he repented of his former conduct. His former conduct of running away from the Lord, abandoning the assignment the Lord has given him. He was not willing to come back and do what he ought to do. He repented of the former conduct. Number three, he returned to the forsaken commission. He returned to the forsaken commission. It's still the same commission. It has not changed at all. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Remember your forgotten call. Get back to it. Repent of your former conduct. Don't run away from the Lord. He wants to use you and he will reward you after you see you. Number three, return to the forsaken commission. Now point number three is consecration and deliverance is consecration and deliverance jonah chapter 2 reading there from verse 7 when my soul fainted within me i remembered the lord and my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy but i will sacrifice 
unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And when he prayed like that, making his consecration, and then the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. We must remember that the Lord is ever merciful. How far we might have gone uh, from the presence of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord remains every time. In uh, Lamentation chapter 3, Lamentation chapter 3 from verse 21, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions they fail not. When you get into trouble, when the family gets into trouble, maybe there's sickness or whatever it may be, even if that problem or trouble has been brought upon us because of our own foolishness and sin, let's remember the Lord, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions will never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Maybe you want to mark that. That's where the songwriter got uh, that uh, thing. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. In verse uh, 24, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, will I hope in the Lord. We can hope in the Lord. We will forever continue to hope in the Lord. In Romans chapter 12, the Lord has shown mercy unto this man, Jonah. And he was uh, willing to pay his vows unto the Lord. To consecrate everything to the Lord. And this is the exhortation we're given. It says in chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As we conclude and look at uh, what uh, Jonah prayed, let's look at uh, this verse 9. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9. I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. As uh, we conclude, I'm asking the question, what is the vow of the preaching prophet? What is the vow of a prophet preacher? Well, the vow is very simple. Let me show you from the Bible when it says, I will pay that that I have vowed. And you think about that for your own life, for yourself. You see, as a child of God, as a Christian worker, as a soul winner, what's my vow? Here is your vow in 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. Verse 14, here is a prophet, and Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord says unto me, that I will speak. That's all the vow he expects from you. What the Lord speaks, says unto me, that I will speak. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, 1 Samuel chapter 12, reading there in verse 23, the preacher's vow. Here is your vow. Here is your consecration. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I shall sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Here is the vow. But I will teach you the good and the right way. That's the vow the Lord is expecting that uh, a prophet, a preacher, a soul winner will make. I will continue to teach the good and the right way. Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22 verse 38. Numbers 22 verse 38. And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. That should be the vow of uh, the preacher. The word that the Lord has put in my mouth, only that am I going to speak. Jeremiah chapter 42, the preacher's vow. Jeremiah chapter 42, reading there in verse 4. 42 verse 4. Here, Jeremiah himself, then Jeremiah, the prophet said unto them, 
have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. That's the vow of the preacher. That whatsoever the Lord will say, whatever the Lord has revealed in his word, all that I'm going to speak, I will not hide anything. I will not keep back anything from you. And Jonah prayed right. He prayed well. He said, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pray that that I vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. That is the salvation of the prophet himself because he was lost now. He was backsliding. That salvation is of the Lord. And the salvation of the Jewish people is of the Lord. And the Nineveh's too, their salvation is of the Lord. And when he prayed aright, the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited Jonah upon the dry land. And uh, you wonder where did it uh, put Jonah? At the very spot where he will commence the work the Lord has given him. When the Lord answers our prayer, uh, the answer will come to help us and assist us to continue the work he has given us to do. You've seen today, number one, the complaint in distress and the confession and the decision as well as the consecration and the deliverance what the lord is calling us to is remember the forgotten call the call that the lord has given you remember it repent of your former conduct you've been lax you've been relaxed in evangelism you have not been praying as you ought to and you have not done what you ought to do remember the former uh, repent of the former conduct and then you return to the forsaken commission and whatever problem may be in our life as we return to the lord and we say lord I'm I'm going to do what you have called me to do it will remove the trouble he will remove the trial all the problems he will take away and then the lord himself he will answer our prayers in jesus name let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer remember the forgotten call as in the lord called you repent of your former conduct have you been careless or the call of the lord forsaking the call of the lord forsaking the way of the lord repent of that former conduct return to the forsaking commission the commission is still there the work is still waiting for you go and preach